just as electrical circuits can be connected together in series and parallel, you could do the same with your water fuel cells. You could connect them all together. And that's why I built them like this. Being able to connect more fuel cells together, you'll be able to make much larger flames. See, this is just one flame off of one reactor. I have the hose coming right out of the side of it here. It goes right down the back, and you can see my outside lighting. A little over two and a half amps, 325 watts. So when I first saw this, I was like, dude, these people are having so much fun. This is an excellent way to make electrical power. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, dude, we could all have these giant rays, okay? We could use piezoelectrics and dance our way to freedom. That's what they were doing in Egypt, see? These things were huge piezoelectric oscillators, acoustic oscillators. This is one way to make electrical power using sound waves. This is a dream of mine. So we can have fun making electricity. So here we go. I'm sure I could come up with a circuit that does just that. So the pyramids in Egypt have these really good acoustic properties. If you go inside any of the pyramids, or just go to Brian Forrester's channel and you can see clearly that the Egyptians had these large acoustic oscillators. These were power plants, and they built them next to the, the Nile for a reason. That's one of the world's largest freshwater water systems, the Euphrates and the Nile. They didn't just put these things next to those for no reason. And they're not shaped like water molecules for no reason either. Remember, the pyramids are eight-sided, and they were covered in limestone, and limestone is the secret to my, my pulsar reactor. Remember what happens when you point an oxyhydrogen flame at a piece of limestone. You're going to get this really brilliant light that's going to come off of it. I'm going to show you how this circuit works. I'm going to turn this thing on. See, just the movement from my air conditioner and my voice is already creating electricity. Just sound waves hitting the table. And you can see I'm already pushing a voltage enough to put through a capacitor and store to a battery. So let's show you how this thing really works. Let's get the music going. This little DC motor I took out of a printer right here can produce up to 7 volts once you get this thing spinning. But see, the magnet's inside in the copper coil. And the biggest magnet in the world won't make electricity unless you turn it. So it's how clever are you to get that spinning, you know? If you have a waterfall, that's great. You can just put a wheel on this thing, you know? Put a fan on here and you have yourself a wind turbine. So it's not hard, you know, I've asked electrical friends, how is electricity produced? Through the laws of induction. This is Faraday's law of induction right here. Anytime you spin a magnet, you know, there's a permanent magnet in here. Inside of that copper coil, you're going to produce electricity. So electricity is very easy to produce. It's no secret.
How clever are you to get that going? See, right now we're the we're the hamster in the cage spinning the wheel. So you got to get the other animals to do it for you, or you got to get the waterfall or somewhere else to get your power. You don't want to be the one making it. That's how clever you are. It's a little bit about solar panels. I'm just gonna add this to the video so you can go back and pause it and read it. For my electrician guys out there, a lot of you know how solar panels work. So here's a little bit about microphones and speakers. So we can go back and pause that and read it, but once you learn a little bit about piezoelectric crystals, they provide a voltage when bent by the pressure of the sound waves. It's a good way to produce electricity. So I was thinking maybe have a, a huge piezoelectric dance floor and that would work really good and then you could have the piezoelectric microphone speaker system set up like this. This is just an example and we could produce electricity that way. Very interesting. So here's a good example of how energy just changes forms. It goes from one type to the next, okay? I've got my voltage meter here. I've got some capacitors, some leads. I've got a bridge rectifier. I've got a microphone piezoelectric circuit. I've got my USB, my wall plug to power this thing up. I've got two solar panels, a coil of LEDs. Okay, I'm gonna create photons with the LEDs and capture them using the solar panels to create electrons, okay? It's the best way to do this. I'm going to have one volt push the one amp through the resistance of one ohm. Okay, electricity is only good if you can get a current to flow. You know, just having static electricity is not very useful to us. You have to be able to get a current to flow, and it becomes useful. This is a simple circuit. I'm capturing sound waves and converting them into DC power that can be used to power our electrolysis reactors, produce hydrogen gas and oxygen. We're going to do this by using sound waves. I'm going to catch the pressure waves of sound using simple electronics that are easily on hand and anybody can get. And you have to remember, a hydrogen society uses all the available electricity that's on hand to create more hydrogen. That's how it works. We're just using one subatomic particle to create the next. And I'm going to go into showing you guys my electromagnetic radiation poster here very soon. See, visible lights right here. And all this other stuff is invisible to you. You just can't see it. We'll get into that later. So the best things in the universe, you can't even see an invisible. Like these sound waves that are going to be coming in here in a second. Let me turn this thing on. I'll show you how it works. And watch how easy it is to extinguish this flame using a, a single valve. See how easy that is? That's why I use a valve like that. So when I have my flame going, it's just one click of the valve. It's very easy like that, and you can stop it every time. It won't even go to your flashback arrestor. Won't even reach back to the reactor because you shut it off at the valve every time. That's the beauty of that one-way valve. So you can see right here, you have to have an energy source to power any ship. You know, the flying disc of Ra, you know, was sustained by the Dejed pillar. You know, these big transformers, you know, you're going to need things like this. You're going to need a big heat sink and a full bridge rectifier. So this is a 1000 volt, 50 amp full bridge rectifier. And normally I have some electrical paste on here and I have a fan and everything. But I have it hooked up over here real simple because I'm just going to run this for a moment to show you how you can just change signals. But you got to remember back in the days, you know, back in the pyramid days, this is how all these stargates and all these ships ran. It was all powered by water. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to take that sine wave. 
And you'll see these symbols. See, I'm used to seeing these symbols every day. That's why I'm so good at seeing it in the Egyptian stuff. When you're, when you're an electrician or a physicist, you're going to see these symbols every day. You can't miss them. You know, they're on the walls of Egypt. I mean, you can't miss this stuff. Think about this. You could power your spaceship up in orbit. All you need is a laser, and you could send it to a solar panel, okay? And that would work really well. I mean, it's not a lot of energy. Like I said, energy transfers aren't always straightforward. But not too bad, huh? You could send that over kilometers worth of distance and charge capacitors. So there's many different ways to make electricity and transport it and make it change forms. So let me turn this on right here. And you and when you uh, had the electrolysis tank on the ship up in orbit, this is what you would be after right here. These two precious atoms right here. The oxygen's on this side and the hydrogens over here and you would want to separate these two gases in space unless you were using them as straight HHO but you would want to take this gas right here and store that separately on your ship, on your spaceship and this is the way it would look there's your water molecule and see all these are all these are waves, they're just changing forms you know remember I told you energy is just changing forms so there's your full bridge rectifier. So you got to be able to switch back and forth between AC and DC. That's very important. You know, these are just the waves. Soon I'm going to show you where the ocean's at and where all this is coming from. And that's quantum physics that we're going to get down into the protons. We're going to talk about gluons and leptons and quarks. And it's going to get really weird. But that's later. But that's how you would handle your starship. See, and energy just changes forms. You want to use the electrical power to split the water and then you have these two atomic gases you have your hydrogen and your oxygen so you can clearly see that it does take a little bit of energy almost up to three watts just to produce a couple of volts in DC amperage okay so just to produce a small amount of electricity it does take electricity to do that remember it just changes from one form to another nothing's free you have to work for it the energy has to come from somewhere okay w once you know the energy is converted from one kind to another careful measurement can show you how it's always converted the energy is never really created or destroyed then you have a very important law that's the first law of thermodynamics okay that's the first law of thermodynamics so our universe is the biggest closed system we know it's just as energetic now as it was when it first came into existence the total amount of energy in a closed system remains constant that's the that's the law of thermodynamics so basically the energy has to come from somewhere it's not free you know it's taking more energy to produce the energy that I'm producing that's just how it is, you know. Think about how a modern light bulb works. It's just conventional light bulbs, only 10% of the energy is turned into light, and the rest is spent warming the room. It's wasted as heat. But even that looks efficient compared to some energy conversions, okay? So this is actually pretty efficient. Actually, the energy is so abundant that my next 10 subscribers are going to receive a free lifetime supply of energy of clean abundant energy look at this richest man in the world I'm just gonna give away a lifetime supply of fresh clean energy all you gotta do is go build your reactor slap that thing together and you could travel across the galaxy ten times over you receive a free lifetime supply of clean energy.